Today I'm going to actually work on a video teaching you how to teach your dog to leave your chickens alone. So um, I want to give you some backstory. Um, I grew up with family that raised labs, quite a bit of dogs, some, not, some mutts in there too. And we had farm life going on when we were growing up and it wasn't very successful in this area. We had um, several catastrophes, the farm life kind, and I watched my parents do all kinds of things to try to, oh yes, come here. I tried to teach them all kinds of things to um, remedy the situation, which were pretty ineffective. So um, as I came into my own and had my own kids and stuff, I, my husband and I, we had a, a business for about seven years of raising um, Labrador Retrievers. And it's been a while since we've done that, but we obviously had quite a few dogs on property and, um, and chickens at the same time. So um, the other old lady dog that sometimes is in the videos, she actually has, uh, when the day that we went to get her as a puppy, the people who were selling her, <laughs> it's really quite distracting here. The people who were selling her actually, the mom dog took off across the yard and chased a, a, a flock of chickens and actually worked to get the one, the one chicken like lethally. It was after the chickens. And the mom dog to her was a hunting dog that had been her instincts, that has been what's trained and all of that. So it was, it was to be expected, right? Um, well, when we came home, the, her mom, which is the other dog that we have here on property, she, uh, when she was a three or three year old or so, two years old, three years old, she also got after our chickens and actually was successfully killed two of them and had one eaten, sad as it is, before we even got home. And so I was really interested in having an uh, atmosphere where my two pets could coexist. Chickens making eggs, dogs doing the dog thing. And um, so I did some homework on it and I've had an opportunity to test it multiple times. So I tested it with the older mom and after teaching it, um, later in that week, we my kids put the dog up in a kennel because we were um, still training for safety on the property. So at, when we left at night, she was in a big kennel pen and a chicken had randomly gotten in there. And so the whole day that I was gone, the, the chicken and the dog were in the same contained environment. And when we came back, they were both a little traumatized, but both alive. The chicken was alive. And that's after that mama dog had actually um, attacked and killed a chicken. So I'm telling you that it's a confession, but at the same time, you have to know that there's a there's some semblance of practice in order for this to work. So this dog that I'm gonna show you with is actually an active hunting dog. We take her out in the fall and she does um, pheasant hunting. She's a little fat right now but um, she is actively participates with the hunts for us. And so her birding instincts are capital. She's an athlete and she does all that stuff for us. Um, and so um, she's already been trained. So I'm gonna show you the, um, the components to how to teach them. And uh, it'll be a little refresher for her. I also have my chicky babies. And so they're obviously not old enough to be out here full time, but I have a, a big enough to actually demonstrate with you. It'll be a little chicky like this, but they make that peeping noise. You know, that's so, so tempting for them as a dog. Um, and then I thought, okay, well, I can't really teach a video on this because it's just, um, I've only had labs and my parents mostly had labs or lab mixes when we were growing up. But, um, a couple, a couple videos ago when I was talking about, um, why YouTube, you'll see on there a couple dogs, come here, you goober, you'll see a couple of my parents, little dogs. And so she had a black dog and a gray dog and the little gray dog is a brand new puppy and her name is BB and totally cute and adorable. Well, they, my mom came for a visit one day and her dog took off after my chicken. My chicken made a, you know, they did that little T-Rex run that they do across the yard and it totally got her um, attention. And so she took off and chased, and made a loop around our house chasing my chicken and had my chicken kind of cornered and the chicken was panicked and exhausted and all of that. Well, so right then and there, I grabbed up my mom's dog and did this technique with her and um, reinforced it a little bit. And it's not a negative reinforcement. That's the part that I really like. You're actually proactively teaching your dog ahead of time and you're speaking dog behavior. And so it's not like you're um, doing anything mean or anything like that. You're not hurting your dog or hurting your relationship with your dog. And um, it worked. So then the, in the videos that you see down there, my um, they were, the gray dog was back and she had an extended stay at my house when my parents vacationed in Florida dogs and um, when when they did that the the chickens came across this BB dog the black the little gray puppy 
and I saw her, all of her instincts flare up to chase this chicken again, and I did. Oh, she sees the, my daughter with a chicken coming in. Come, she'll be back. And lo and behold, I was able to use the same voice, the same commands, and she respected it, and it worked. So it was a little dog, a brand new puppy dog. Okay, so my daughter Liz is coming in with the chicken, so let's get to it. Um, so when you have a dog, when you have an untrained animal and the chickens are close, you'll usually see a response in the dog that says the dog's totally paying attention to the chicken. Like their little ears are up and they're like, what? You know, and they're paying, kind of like she's doing with me. They're just all anticipated, eager, whatever. So when you get the chicken, um, where are we go? Probably best if I do that. We'll try to see if we can get that response out of her. You see her, she's already making eye contact with Lizzie because she knows. So what you do is you say, the goal is to do do a dominance thing. I I'm going to show her that this is my chicken. You know, kind of unheard of. This is an actual hunting dog. So mine, mine. You see how she's making eye contact with me and her. Normally they'd be all like, oh, and they'd be all energy toward the chicken. Well, she already knows. My chicken, mine, mine. And when I first have to train her, I do this. You use your hands like you would imitate the mom's mouth. And you're just jabbing. Come here, Lizzie, so I can show them how hard I'm doing this so they know. So if I'm going to bump you, so don't fall over. It's this. It's no, no. You're doing this. Just like the mom's mouth, you'd be mouthing. You say, no, no. <laughs> Give her a big lesson here. Come here, Cindy. Watch this. So I'm going to try to make this um, chicken flap its wings so it actually is mine. You see her sniff and smell? Mine. Mine. So she's more engaged with me right now than the chicken. See how she's not even making eye contact? Oh, mine. 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 See how she's all engaged with me? Mine. So if she was to at all have paid attention to the chicken, if she was to get her eyes all perky and be all wild, then I would do this. I would say mine. And I would take my hands and forcibly do this. And you get in closer. You take your chicken and you take it in and you get closer and closer and closer until your dog will submit. So you might need two people. You might need one person to hold the chicken and one person to manage the dog. But the whole time you're going to be asserting your dominance and letting the dog know that it's yours. So why don't you go get the chicken and we'll see. So she's obviously done this before. Um, it is possible to have them coexist. Yeah, just one. Try to keep it warm on your way out because it's cold out here. So, mine. So now, like, there's often times in the yard where the chickens go right past. Sometimes the chicken will get a crazy spark of wild and just go and like fluff across. Like they decide the dog is scary when the dog hasn't been scary for months. And the dog, my dogs will instantly perk up like this, like they're hunting. And then they remember and they're like, oh, this is not mine. That's not mine. So basically you're inserting the chicken into the pack order that you are. So if you are the dominant figure for your dog, if you have a, uh, if you have mastered your dog and your dog hasn't mastered you, then you should be able to come along with some correlation of this. Speaking dog, instead of punishing the dog when the dog chases the chicken or worse, kills your chicken, then you actually. So I know I see on Facebook and stuff, there's a lot of people who have neighbor issues where their dogs, if that dog is on your property and it's friendly enough, you could probably take a second and do this. It doesn't take very many times. And if the dog has the, um, a respect for you and your voice, then it will probably respect the situation. So obviously it's trial and error. I think I counted up, I think I have trained um, five different dogs to coexist like this. And um, I haven't had any dead chickens since the first time before I had learned. And, um, and like I said, active hunting dogs. Now they are labs, they're smart, but we did train a what is she? She's a Schnauzer uh, Yorkie, a Snorky mix. So, um, so okay. So, so Cindy hasn't met this. Uh, this is Cindy, and she hasn't met a chicky yet in a long time. So she's going to be curious about it, but she will respect me. Oh, see her? See how she's all intrigued? Mine, right here. Mine. She's mine. Mine. have become submissive and I can get this all the way up now. Oh, mine, right here. Mine, mine, mine. Good girl, that's right, good girl. See all that, sub can you see her submit over here? She's curious and curiosity isn't a bad thing. It's when they get that hyper energy that says you're going to be mac and cheese this next, you know? So I'm going to put the chicky on the ground just to see what she does. Mine. 
my chicken. That's good girl. That's my chicken. You know. That's my chicken. me than uh, checking out this new animal on the farm. So hopefully that works. Um, it has worked for me successfully. Sometimes you'll have to repeat the process like two or three times. But if you are have, if your dog is submitted to you, then this should work. So if you, um, if people know how to make their dogs submit to them, I'm not, I don't really want to become the dog lady, but with that seven years of raising logs, I kind of know. So it is a trick to teach them, but you actually, there is some stuff out there for teaching your dog to submit to you. Because once they submit to you, you have all kinds of ability here. Want to come see again? Come here. What do you think? Huh? Okay, the chicken is totally in her space and she's going to submit. Good girl. Good girl. That's a good girl. That's my chicken, right? So all positive reinforcement, all done well. And we're gonna get the chickie back under the incubator light. And future well summer gonna lay me some pretty eggs. Bye.